In August 1947, the rainy season brought the long-awaited showers of liberty and independence to India. The whole country was in the mood of celebration and revelry until a train arrived at the Old Delhi Railway Station. The train looked ghostly and reeked of death. Welcome to Nunny History, and today we bring you the shocking tale of one of the bloodiest upheavals in human history, the Ghost Trains of India. Just like the great U.S. of A., India, too, was a victim of the nefarious British colonialism. The British Raj ruled and exploited India and its people for 200 years. But when the Second World War declared the pillars of the empire too fragile to hold on to the subcontinent, the empire pulled out one last parting gift. Pitting Muslims and the rest of the religions against each other, they encouraged the voice of religious extremists, demanding a separate nation for Indian Muslims. The end result was the All Indian Muslim League, an elitist party until 1937. The Muslim League all of a sudden proclaimed itself as the voice of all Islamic population of India and demanded the partition of India into two states, one of them exclusive to a certain religion. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the leader of the Muslim League, insisted that India's name should be dissolved and the other state must be named Hindustan which translates to land of Hindus, making it a religious exclusive state like Pakistan. However, the rest of India declined that suggestion and chose to be a secular state where Muslims were welcome to stay if they desired. On the contrary, Pakistan founders asked Hindus and Sikhs of newborn Pakistan to convert to Islam or leave the land they were living in for generations. The riots began on March 8, 1947, when Jinnah had the Bill of Partition approved from British overseers. States were entirely assigned to India or Pakistan. The land of Punjab and Bengal were to be divided between the two nations. The argument for such a hostile decision was based on these states having the same number of Muslim and non-Muslim populations. Hindus, Sikhs, and Muslims of Punjab were living peacefully, oblivious of the approaching bloodstorm. In Pakistan, the allotted side of Punjab, all India Muslim League leaders began to instigate native Muslims to round up any and every person of any other religion and force them to convert to Islam. For the next four months, West Punjab was stained with murders, looting, and rapes of innocent civilians by Muslim League financed mobsters. Shell-shocked to see their own neighbors turning on them, Hindus and Sikhs were forced to leave Pakistan. Thirty trains were arranged to carry refugees from one side of the border to the other. However, as these trains were preparing to depart with refugees stuffed like cattle, religious extremists arrived at the stations and charged at the trains. According to Pakistani-American historian Aisha Jalal, these mobs were monetarily subsidized by the Muslim League and carried out one of the most horrendous massacres in human history. Helpless passengers were cornered in train coaches as the zealous mobs invaded and started reaping people with swords and sickles like ripe crops. Corpses fell on top of other corpses, creating heaps of dead bodies. Women witnessed their husbands, fathers, sons, and brothers slaughtered. Men were forced to watch their mothers, sisters, wives, and daughters defiled and then killed or abducted. The only passengers who survived this barbarism were those who hid successfully or just pretended to be dead. When the trains arrived in India, a lot of them were too scared to come out and ask for help or water. Some of these massacres were committed by delaying the departure of trains, while some trains were obstructed before they could cross the borders. Others were looted while moving through Pakistani territories. Most passengers didn't just lose their home, wealth, and relatives, they also lost their lives and dignity. The first ghost train was enough to mark the celebrations of independence only to be turned into tragedy, but it did not stop there. Soon more ghost trains full of corpses arrived at Armister, Ambala, and Fidospur. The very trains that were supposed to unite families and friends turned New India's mourning into mourning. 
Some historians believe that the massacres on the trains were meant to provoke the other communities in India, so that Muslims who were opting to stay in India would feel unsafe and migrate to Pakistan. The strategy worked as the ghost trains created enough religious tensions to initiate a reaction from other communities in India. Some Muslim families migrated because of losing relatives in the riots, while some migrated because some of their family members participated in the riots. India before independence was a union of small princely states. When British imperials receded from India, these states were forced to choose to merge with Pakistan or India. All princely states in the region of Punjab had Sikh rulers and they were inclined to join the Indian Union except King Hari Singh of Kashmir. Hari Singh didn't want to join either side and desired to maintain his regality at Kashmir's sovereignty. While India reluctantly respected that, Pakistan responded with an invasion. Cornered with no army to defend his kingdom, King Hari Singh pleaded with India to help remove Pakistani militia. India's new appointed Prime Minister, Sardar Patel, agreed to help. In return, Hari Singh agreed to make Kashmir a part of India. This resulted in the First Indo-Pak War. The Muslim League tried to bully other Punjab princely states to join Pakistan and threatened them with invasion if they did not cooperate to convert to Islam. Miffed at the arm-bending tactics and sponsored communal discord, these princely states united amongst themselves and armed their own militias. In September of 1947, these militias massacred 20,000 Muslim refugees in New Delhi and East Punjab before the Indian Army restored peace. The flare of religious violence in Bengal had spread to states of Assam and Bihar and soon reached Delhi. India was on fire, flooded with riots from the western border to the eastern border. As millions of people lost their homes and loved ones, the British regime spectated. Yeah, they just watched while waiting for their return to the United Kingdom. United India had a population of 30 million on the eve of independence. In the 1947 riots, a total of 3 million people lost their lives, city, and country. More than 1 million people were killed. Heavy civilian casualties, followed by a war, sowed the seeds of animosity and dispute between two neighboring countries. Despite all this, those who survived yearned to go back to their ancestral homes, but they are forbidden aliens to the country they were born in. The bond of humanity among these Punjabis transcends beyond religions. Our own staff writer, who wrote the script of this video, would not have been able to write it if rioters would have found his grandparents on one such ghost train. His grandparents survived the ordeal by pretending to be dead and hiding under the corpses of their fellow refugee passengers. They traveled in a train full of dead people while holding their breath for 400 kilometers, only to break down and collapse on Delhi's railway station they still had the challenge of restarting their lives with nothing but a lifelong trauma ahead of them. Do you think the India-Pakistan partition was avoidable or was it really necessary? Tell us in the comments and thanks for watching Nutty History.